here we go again. Oh, a lot of tape. Let's see what we got. Hello, I'm Robert, and you're always welcome here in my busy little shop. On today's episode, we're going to open up that box. I believe that's from Land Whirlwind Leather out of Indianapolis, and I've got a project that I'm working on, and it's got supplies in it that I need. I hope you're having a great day. Get into this. Oh yeah. Yeah. I have inch and a half and inch and a quarter buckles. Uh, some Chicago screws. And some key rings. All right. I'll set this aside. This is the uh, belt project I've been working on. I got some of those to finish today. But right now, I'm going to work on the keychain. So next, to uh, create the blank for my keychain, I've got a die here that I'm going to use to cut them out. And it doesn't take any fancy leather. This is uh, some cut off from a hide. This is the belly side of it. And I'm going to cut out my keychain here. A lot of times I do this on the concrete floor, but having a hard time getting a good picture angle to do that today down there. Some people call, uh, you know, the belly or the edge a waste. Or scrap and I, I don't it's just leather for other projects the only scrap is really this stuff here that's going in the trash then I don't like the uh, the flesh side on the back of the keychain you know I don't know that it's a horrible thing but I don't care for it. So I'm gonna show you how I handle that. I'm not gonna use the whole tail of this, so if it runs off the edge, that's okay. Obviously, you can cut these out by hand, but I've tried. It sure is hard to get them to look right. All right. Now, I don't use the um, all of this here because I'm doing is covering up the back side, and then this leather folds over. So I need to get rid of this extra here, and I've got a... Uh, pattern piece I have here. Now I don't like those sharp corners. I'll just nip those off. And then if your leather is a little bit thick for the fold over, you could always uh, skive this down a little bit here. I think I'm gonna take just a little bit off that thickness. I'll show you how I do that. I'll just do that real quick here. All right. These are gonna go together just like that. And I've got a concho to go on there. So let's glue these together. Obviously, I don't need glue up on this part here. So basically just from where I skived down.
now I just line these up and hook them together, or laminate them together. And then to make sure I have a good contact, I'll tap them down. Mainly focus on the edges. So next, uh, I'm going to add conchos to some of these. Let me get my conchos out. We need to make the hole for the concho. And they're not all the same size on the back. The uh, stud that the screw goes into, not all the same diameter. So I want to make sure I get the right size. I have this little strip here that I made with the uh, punch. And so the quarter inch hole's the right one for this one. And good, it'll work for all of these today. I have had some that are larger diameter. So what I do is I made, this is kind of a template to get them centered in there, right? If I just press down on there, it'll make a mark. And I've got a hole here that'll mark where the double cap rivet is gonna be installed. So I'll do that here. I should have done it when I was the first time through. Line it back up on here. If you have any edges that don't line up nicely, you can always uh, sand those. I'm gonna edge the fronts. I'm not edging the backs. And the reason why I'm not edging the backs is this is, uh, uh, there's some chrome tan leather and it just doesn't edge very well. So I'm just gonna ease this front. going to do it on the double thick ones. Once I have the hole done, then the next thing I'm going to decide is do I want to do some stitching along with this uh, concho. And in this case, I'm going to do that. So what I'll do is I'll put in my stitching allowance here. And on this one, since I got a stitching allowance, I'll go ahead and create the holes for the stitching. So kind of my idea is to be able to use up uh, smaller bits of leather. I don't call them scraps. Scraps go in the trash. So I'll do my stitching holes around this. very organic uh, shape so I've used the uh, two 
tying stitching chisel for the majority of this. You can make these as simple or elaborate as you'd like. If you uh, don't want to use conchos, I've stitched in patterns before on here. I keep a small box of keychains and such that are sometimes they're at different stages of completion. And uh, if I've got a morning where I don't feel like working on the the current larger project or maybe I've had a busy day and just have a little bit of time in the shop here at the end of the day and I'll pull that box out work on uh, some keychains uh, I've got some wallets the same way and uh, it just gives me an opportunity to make good use of my time and uh, by the time the uh, my winter season where I've got the most time in the shop. By the time that's over, I've got a pretty good selection of items for my artisan shows. If you have a sewing machine, I suppose you could uh, sew this pattern with the sewing machine as well. And obviously you wouldn't have the amount of time in it that I've got. There we go. Then I can pick uh, maybe a pretty color thread to go with that. So I'm gonna finish out a couple different ways here. So I've got this one, I'll stitch, and I'm just gonna oil this one. And then this black one, I'm gonna leave the way it is. This one here, I'll just end up sanding and burnishing. I'm just gonna leave this one just straight black. I can add uh, other conchos to it. You know, I've got a few black ones here. On some of these, I find it easier to eyeball them because this has got a lot of weight to this side, weight visually. So it probably needs to be a little bit off center. So I'm gonna eyeball it in here. There we go. That's pretty cool looking. I think I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this one here. I'll probably use, I've got a light gray. They say it's uh, silver, but it's a light gray. My hardest challenge when uh, sewing these key fobs is to try to figure out the color combination that somebody might want. And and there's a much larger selection of colors than that, but that's what I've got in my box. So I'm just gonna do a simple stitch around here, but I thought I would talk for a second about the process because, you know, obviously when we're doing leather work, we end up with uh, leftover pieces and parts and uh, they collect. And if you don't have a way to use them, then after a while, you don't know what to do with all of them. So to me, it's kind of a way of taking something that most people would say has very little value and turn it into something of greater value. And, and that doesn't mean that you necessarily have to sell it to turn it into greater value. It might be a greater value as a gift. Um, they make uh, nice stocking stuffers or maybe a, a apartment warming gift for someone getting their first apartment or, you know, who knows what. I mean, there's all kinds of opportunities there. And um, it's just a way to utilize that, a little bit of cost. You know, I've already got the leather, you know, maybe at the co cost of the concho and the, and the ring and the fasteners. Um, some of my conchos I've got are e expensive. So I have to be aware of that when I'm making them. And sometimes it's conchos I got in as a sample to you know, show to somebody for a project and now you've got one of those, what are you gonna do with that? And it doesn't take very long. It's kind of like your leather scrap pile. It, your collection of uh, miscellaneous hardware seems to grow or at least it does for me. So I'll make up uh, 
shoot by the time i'm done i'll make four or five dozen of these in different combinations and like i said it's a nice little gift or thank you for somebody uh could be used for a house key or a mailbox key or the gate key anyway i've droned on here enough i'm going to finish the stitching on this and then i finish it off on the back side of the flap so you don't see the the beginning or the end and uh, once i get this done here then we'll come back and we'll assemble a few of these here i do have to, to burnish the edges of that and uh so hope you're having a great day So I'm just going to do a quick burnish on here. This uh, concho has got the uh, dark brown on the back and I've oiled the front of it. That's why it's a little bit darker. And I'll make these, like this one here is not going to end up with any stitching on it. But if someone wants stitching, uh, I could add that. Obviously it'll be a little bit harder because I can't get around the back here. but. I would just come up around. I'd start here and go around. So. This darkness here, some of that on the edge, that's from the water, and that will uh, that'll go away when it dries. So I've got the edges burnished. I'm going to install this concho. I always put a little bit of something to keep the uh, screw from backing out. In this case, I'm using some clear fingernail polish. And I'll put some on the post as well on a concho that has a specific direction. And um, it'll help lock it in place so it doesn't turn. I don't know why, but these screws always want to back out. Line that up. All right. So I've got a few different ones to this point. Kind of like that one. So the next thing is going to be to install the ring. And depending on the fit of it, you may want to put the uh, rivet in and then feed the ring on it or and close it on here and I think this one's gonna work out fine this way I have seen people just hammer it on the flat surface and you can do that you just end up with a flat double cap instead of a domed one If I want to add stitching this later, if someone says I want it, but I want stitching on it, I could always come up here and come across here and around. So I would do stitching that way. Obviously, it'd be hard at this point to add it on here. I guess you could always come up and across here, but uh, I don't like that look. So that's as simple as it is to add the, um, the ring to it. And this will mold and get curved over time. So there's a simple way to use up some of your smaller pieces of leather. This one here, I'm just going to leave it uh, no concho. Now, someone's saying, you know, that'd be fun, but I don't have the die to cut those. You can make them with other designs as well. Let me, let me get one and show you. So when you have uh, strips at the end of projects uh, from belt blanks or whatever, here's another way to do kind of a similar thing. I thought this was a little bit of an odd design, but I've actually had a couple people purchase that. Here I've added some stitching. You could add lettering here uh, that maybe says mailbox or gate or whatever. So just a way to use, like I said, small bits of time and leather.
here we are. This is a way to use some of the, like I say, uh, small bits of time and leather to make something that someone will enjoy. Uh, nice gifts, uh, maybe for somebody that wants something out of your shop, but they don't want a leather belt and don't need a saddle. So please like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day.